Hi, my name is Paul and I'm an engineer at MI. As part of the Power Management IC How To video series, I will showcase Instrument Studio Pro interface. So in my last two videos, I showcase how to get to this point and we walk through the hardware that I was using that I'm using for this uh, type of demo and then interface and connection points. So first, for anyone who is not familiar with Instrument Studio Pro, uh, I want to give a quick introduction. So Instrument Studio Pro uh, provides a configuration based uh, software to control and configure instruments, uh, run measurements and develop test sequences within a single environment. So currently in my video, obviously I am uh, running the open source demo that I re downloaded last time. And in my first video, um, uh, we got to this point right here and then um, where we opened Instruments Studio Pro uh, and then we got to the measurements part. So today let's explore the type of measurements we have and let's run some of, the, some of them and then let's see some data here. So I already preset this through the manual layout option of Instrument Studio Pro. Uh, and then for anyone that wants to look into details of Instrument Studio Pro itself, uh, I will put a link in there for, to the webinar and uh, maybe some sort of training videos that you can review in more detail. But for today's video, I'm just going to concentrate on the type of measurements to ensure that you can run the power uh, management um, validation solution here. So I already preset, I went to the configure this through the manual layout. I configure these as a large uh, panels. So I have uh, efficiency and low regulation, line regulation, low transient response, ripple, and then multi-channel output voltage accuracy here available. And then uh, I'm gonna show you how to set up and let's run it. So a lot of things that comes, it's already preset here. So uh, the first thing you want to do is actually initialize the dot. So assuming you're using the same dot, right? Uh, it's already set to current limit to 25 and 6 volts. And then uh, you want to select your power supply and then click run. So this should initialize the dot that I'm using. And next is we'll be able to perform some measurements. So efficiency and load regulation is the, is, is the first one. And it's, um, it's essentially to help optimize uh, energy usage uh, while load, load regulation ensures that a stable performance under these varying loads. So it's a great way to, to, to run this and, and see how our DUT performs. Uh, in this perform uh, measurement type, the only things that you need to make sure that it's selected is the power supply. And then you want to select the E-load, right? To provide some sort of load there. It's This example comes for configured. Um, these are the configured uh, variables. Obviously, if you're changing the dot, the variables will have to be adjusted to match your dot. For mine, this stays as is. So after selecting my power supply and e-load, I should be able to run this uh, example for efficiency and load regulation. We should be able to see some data. So I'm going to click run. And we're doing this in a number of four points, right? So we should see four graphs uh, come up here. Obviously, we're utilizing the 300 watts of power. This is a single instrument kind of demo, but there's also ganging available. So if you want to connect in series and parallel, there's also a demo for that. Then we'll do it in a separate video. So here we go. So we have the results, right? So we can see that the first pass, the efficiency looks like it was a little bit higher versus the other, other um, graphs. Well, efficiency got a little bit lower as we increase the, uh, the load current. So we started being six volts and we went all the way to uh, stop current uh, 24 amps and then stop voltage 20 volts as we can see in number four steps. So we can see the efficiency of our uh, in, in input power supply and then uh, load regulation. We can see uh, voltage versus current here and then uh, load regulation percentage here. Um, how much it deviated, uh, you can see all the four points here. Now, perhaps let's do the line regulation so we can do one by one. So same thing in uh, line regulation, we need to select our power supply and current. And uh, this type of measurement is typically to monitor your uh, line voltage stability, uh, to ensure it's consistent operation, you know, to help 
make sure there's no disruptions uh, in your system, right? So let's let's uh, select our power supply here in the source configurator, and then from the load, obviously select the E load, which should automatically show up here, and then we'll go click click run again, and hopefully we get some good data here. So here we see uh, source voltage and low voltage graph over here. Uh, we're doing um, starting voltage six and stopping voltage at 20. Uh, we can zoom in on this if we want it, right? We can uh, do different manipulation on this. Uh, uh, for line regulation, we have the percentage here, voltage deviation and percentage wise. So we can see it's uh, not very significant. Obviously our debt is, is pretty good, I think. So we won't see a lot of issues with, on it. Uh, let's run the lone transient response. So let's see if our dot has uh, any type of noise. Uh, so low transient response is um, essentially assessing how quickly uh, the system responds to uh, load changes. So again, we'll select our power supply and then we'll select our E load and then we'll go to click run and let's see if we get any transient, any noise inside our power. So as we can see, it's pretty clean. Um, uh, time and then we're able to read uh, quite quickly the first transient so if you did head noise you can quickly detect that and be able to zoom in the hardware is capable of 1.8 million, million samples per second so it, it can get pretty quick so it helps you to see these transient noises um, clearly our supply is pretty clean so there's not much going on okay next let's see the ripple measurements. So again, for source configuration, you actually need to uh, configure your power supply, your e-load, and this time I'm also connected, I have connected a scope, so we can see any type of ripple, any type of noise levels here. Uh, and ripples is typically the measurements just to see any, if you get any uh, voltage fluctuations, right, to help to see to ensure that device reliability will be there. So it's a good thing to validate and typical thing to validate, right? So let's, everything's configured. Let's click run it and see if any um, uh, voltage fluctuations happen. So we can see some voltage fluctuations, but they seem to be quite minor. I'm just zooming in to see yeah, it's quite minor. So nothing, nothing um, large. Uh, and I'm going to clear that and then run again just to kind of see the data here. Okay, and then here we go. We get the ripple voltage. Okay, next let's see the multi-channel output voltage accuracy. So here again, we need to select the resource name, which is for the power supply. And then for load configuration, I select an E-load with the current level 1 amp voltage limit 6 volts and output voltage 3.3. And then I should be able to run that and see. I selected only one channel, so I'm gonna see only one graph, but I can see the accuracy of output um, voltage on, on one of the channels, but you can check multiple channels. So this kind of gives you an overview of Instrument Studio Pro, like what, what type of readings you'll be able to get with power management validation solution. So if you follow the video one and two, and when you get to this point, you should be able to just run it. If you're running your own DUT, then it'll require different settings, but hopefully this is helpful and I'll see you in the next video to check out the automation, but thanks for watching.